describing people. Like you introduce a new character and you kind of want to pause the story for a second just to explain what this character looks like and go through their physical appearance and, and give the reader a good mental image of what this character looks like. But you don't want to just go through an inventory list of all their physical features because that can, first of all, be too long and dragged out. It can also make the story make the like kind of hit pause on the story for a long time just to describe this character and go in depth about every single detail. Um, and a lot of times we don't need that much description. So a lot of writers do get carried away with detail, um, but some writers don't describe characters enough. And then we're left with this false mental image. <laughs> like we're allowed, we're left to like create our own mental image and then have it shattered later. Like I've experienced that many times. Right, and then the books. movie comes out and then there's outrage because no one thought <laughs> the character looked like that. Yeah. Because we didn't describe them. Exactly. So, so that's why it's, it's important to have some foundational building blocks yes. and then small things you can leave up to the interpretation of the reader. Yeah. But it does help us to have a more vivid image in our minds of, okay, who is this person we just met? Right, exactly. So some basics that you might want to describe about a physical description is facial features, eyes, lips, nose, jaw, brows, etc., build and height, skin tone, hair color, and texture. Those are like the absolute basics to me. That's like, I need to know these four things or at least, you know, two or uh, three out of four <laughs> to be able to conjure like a pretty accurate mental image. However, you can also use other distinctive features about a character to show us something, not just about what they look like, but who they are. Um, and maybe their history, maybe their backstory, maybe where they're from, maybe um, something about their personality. So those things can be hairstyle, scars or tattoos, if they have any, makeup or the lack thereof, clothing, what's, what's their fashion style, voice or accent, posture, scent, and gestures or nonverbal cues. So like their body language can say a lot about who they are as well. Um, if you have a character who is more confident, their body language will be different than somebody who's more insecure. So. Those are all physical description things that could serve to say something about who this character is and where they're from and what is their role in the story and maybe even something about their internal conflict. Who knows? Get creative with it. And again, take into consideration the point of view character who's doing the describing of the character that we just introduced. What are the things that they notice about this character and why? Are they things that this character would notice, that the point of view character would notice? Um, I've seen that so many times in, in books where like the point of view character is describing another character and they just start describing things and, and using words and descriptors that feel so outside of their personality and their voice. It's like they wouldn't notice that. They wouldn't describe it like that. It's, and it feels a little bit unrealistic um, because of that. So asking yourself, how do their preconceived ideas and opinions affect the way they see this person? And how does their personality affect the way they see this other person and how they describe them? Um, and, and also how, how the point of view character is looking at this new character, what do they mean to them? Like, what is the purpose that this new character is going to serve? And how does the point of view characters perception of them change because of that? That's another question that you could ask yourself. Um, for example, I was once writing a story where my point of view character was a pickpocket and he was describing a woman that he was going to steal from. And I put more emphasis on describing the jewelry that she was wearing that he was going to steal more so than describing her physical appearance because that's what he would be thinking about and that's what he would be noticing. So that's what I mean about like taking into account what the point of view character would realistically notice about this other character. Right. Yeah, that's a great example because it's very rooted in his character, who he is yeah. as an individual based on what he's noticing. Right. That's really dictating what he's noticing, what his attention's being drawn to. So, and the, the reverse can be true as well. For an example, when it feels out of place is if we've established that maybe a character doesn't really pay attention very well or they skim over 
um, a lot of details and then suddenly they meet someone and they're describing every single detail about that person and we've already established that they don't really necessarily pay attention to a lot of things. Right. Maybe their their mind drifts more, they kind of gloss things over. Well, then they wouldn't really notice too much about someone else. Um, so, so there's a lot, or if you have a character who's more self-absorbed, maybe they notice hardly anything about other people. So it's like you have, and vice versa, maybe you have someone who's very you know, sensitive to small details. So maybe they notice something like, you know, the color of the buttons on someone's shirt. But if you have someone who's like, doesn't notice much around them, suddenly they're describing the buttons on someone's shirt. I feel like that's a little out of place for them. Why are they noticing that? And another thing to keep in mind is that you're bringing not only your character's attention, but the reader's attention to all of these details. Mm -hmm. And everyone's attention span is different. Most people don't have an extremely long attention span and they're looking for reasons why you're bringing their attention to this thing. So it's best to make it meaningful, make it matter to the character either because of their personality or it has to matter to the story somehow. Like, you know, those buttons are gonna have special meaning later. (laughs) You know what I mean? Exactly. So just keep keeping in mind, and of course you don't have to overthink it, When in doubt, just write whatever you want. And in the editing process, you can always go back and ask yourself these questions. If you find that you're getting jammed up, overthinking this, like, do I really need to describe that her hair is curly? Just write whatever you want. And when you edit, these are great questions to come back to through the editing process. We do that all the time. Yeah, 100%. So true. And remember that you don't have to describe everything all at once. If you do want to describe everything about a character, you can also like describe the the rudimentary basics at first and then sprinkle in more descriptions as time goes on, which is one of my favorite methods. Okay, so two more examples side by side of describing characters. First, the flat example. She had long curly hair, the color of honeysuckle and eyes as blue as the morning sky in late June. Her skin was tan from the sun, and her strawberry pink lips were always smiling. She had dimples in her cheeks, freckles across her nose, and a peace sign tattoo on her left ankle from her freshman year in high school when she and her friends had all dared each other to get tattoos. She never wore makeup, but she didn't need to. She was a natural beauty. Today she was wearing a Rolling Stones t-shirt and denim shorts, but she still looked glamorous. So as you can see, that description is pretty loaded with like lots of metaphors and comparisons and colors and backstory roots (laughs) and backstory right so it's like it's a bit muddy right and once again remember every single thing you mention you're bringing your reader's attention to that thing yes And does it matter you're bringing them to that ask yourself why does it matter why does the peace sign tattoo matter It doesn't to this character we're describing now. Now, if she had like some mysterious scar that's that's like attached to her backstory and we have to know about this backstory, that might be meaningful. Um, Or even a tattoo that's attached to her backstory that's meaningful, but it's in this case, not meaningful. So I would start by taking away that. And I would also start by honing in more on these descriptions of like hair the color of honeysuckle eyes as blue as the morning sky in late june can we like make those a little bit less dense um and a little bit more quick giving the same impression but in a um like a a quicker more of a snapshot view so that we can deliver the same sort of feeling and at the same time show the reader who this character is not just what they look like So here's a better example for comparison. She was like sunshine in human form, honeysuckle hair, sky blue eyes, and a laugh like the first day of summer. Effortlessly glamorous, even in a Rolling Stones t-shirt and denim shorts. It was impossible to not notice her dimples because she was always smiling. And that was the most beautiful thing about her. She was genuinely happy in a way that made everyone around her smile. So shorter, more to the point, but as you can see the difference, the first one is like an inventory list of the character's physical features. And the other one serves to tell us not just how they look, but a little bit about who they are. And we still have room for 
those more um, descriptive, lyrical, that style. Um, but in like the metaphors of like the honeysuckle, the sky blue eyes, but without it bogging down the description. So finding ways to play with that and remembering that less is usually more, mm -hmm. I find, with descriptions. If you can say what you want to say in fewer words, that to me is even more impressive than having a, a big, long, ostentatious yeah. sentence. And what's interesting too, unless you're literally going to rewind and re-listen to the flat example again, you probably don't even, s s like, where are the differences? You know what yeah. I mean? It's almost like, hmm, they kind of convey the same thing. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? You're not like, oh, I'm really missing this part of it. Right. Which I mean, maybe you are. Everyone's different, but <laughs> yes, true. But um, it's almost like they're they're so similar, mm -hmm. but yet the the small differences made it more compact and made it snappier, fresher, and it conveys the meaning quicker. But yet it's still so similar. We still have so many of the elements that made the first example fun. Mm -hmm. That exactly. there's really, it's almost like hmm, unless I go back and read the first one, it sounds pretty much the same, just a little bit quicker, a little bit snappier. Yeah, exactly. And I think that it's it's easy to go overboard, especially with metaphors, especially when describing a person, but also other descriptions too. Because if you use too many metaphors stacked on top of each other, you almost lose track of what you're even looking at. It's like, yes. am I looking at a girl or am I looking at honeysuckle or the sky or what am I looking at? Right. You know, it's like, it's strawberry, pink lips. It's like all these metaphors stacked on, stacked on top of each other. And then you're almost trying to like see through the metaphors to right. the actual What's thing. behind the metaphor. And remembering yeah. too, sometimes if you want one or two features to stand out among the rest, we want to sort of centralize around those features rather than spending too much time like her eyes were like this her lips were like this her hair looked like this we mm -hmm. want to maybe just like boom here's the centerpiece yeah you know her hair was tumbling around her shoulders like a waterfall whatever that becomes the centerpiece and then everything else is a little bit um back seat right because our attention can't be brought to all of it at once. So that's something to just keep in mind is if you want something to stand out, make everything else sort of support that one feature rather than everything has a big description around it because then the one thing you might want to stand out sort of gets lost in the white noise of everything else. Yeah, very true. That's a very good point. So yeah. Those are the main three pillars, I would say, of writing descriptions that you'll encounter is describing scenes and scenarios, putting that through the lens of your character's perceptions, and then describing situations where you can bring your character's voice and personality into the description, and then describing other characters where, again, you're, you're putting all of this together. You're putting together the perceptions, the interpretations, and the character voice and personality, and using that to also help you describe other characters in your story through the perspective of your point of view character. Um, but remembering that oftentimes less is more, but in the first draft, when you're just letting the creativity flow, just see what happens. Just write forward and don't doubt yourself too much. Enjoy the creative playtime that is writing. It should be enjoyable. It should be fun. Um, but remember these examples. Remember these side-by-side -side comparisons and see if you can write your own side-by-side -side comparisons of taking a flat scene, a flat description, and turning it into something more creative and immersive and layered with conflict right and it's a really fun exercise you can yeah. do exactly like we did like abby was saying you can even just copy and paste maybe you're working on like okay this is a section i'm working on copy and paste it into a separate document and then come up with a few different versions and read all of them and then see what do i like about some which one do i like the best which one is my least favorite and then ask yourself why yeah that's a great point that would be a fantastic exercise guaranteed to improve your writing and this these are things that you learn from doing and mm -hmm. kate and i are big proponents of learning from doing and learning from the practice of 
writing, not from, you know, studying it forever and never actually doing it. So you have to get your hands dirty, you know, do the thing, write the book, write the story and write forward and learn yeah. from the experience. Just play, yeah. enjoy the process, try different things, see what works, see what doesn't. That's the best way to just get familiarized with, with what is your style? What is your voice? What do you like? What do you not like? You can only learn these things by just doing it over and over again and just play and have fun.